Hi Dom. Um I oh, yeah. just thought I'd get you I thought I'd get you on here for a chat and I just wanted you to introduce yourself to everyone and say who you are and what you do. Yeah, I'm uh, Dom Armstrong. I, I was formerly a councillor for the Green Party in the North East. I was the first ever Green Party councillor in the North East by about half an hour. Um I've recently resigned. Um having become quite disillusioned with the direction the party's going in regarding um, women's rights and trans um, extreme activists that I see in our party who are getting a real hold on the leadership, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion from what I gather, and the lack of debate around the issue. I was going to say, I saw your status online, and I did have a little read of it today, and that's what got my attention onto you and who you are, actually. So I thought your status was really well written, and it was really reasonable, and it was quite eye-opening um, to have somebody in the Green Party speak up the way you did. So I thought it was really brave of you. I know that uh, phrase, you're so brave, has been overused, but I did think it was brave. I think the, low, the bar's pretty low if that was brave, to be honest, but thank you for the compliment. I mean, um, mm -hmm. I think it was just telling, telling the truth. Um, and I couldn't, I've always been completely 100 percent um believed in everything the green party did and when i seen what went on at conference and, and the lack of debate and the spoiling the debate and it was a bit like i don't know if you, uh, this could be an age thing again. <laughs> have you ever seen the film the wizard of oz yeah when they get to the when they get to the, where the wizard is and it's a little guy pulling the behind the curtains with the rods with the voice i just felt yeah. like i'd seen that Felt like it was a sham. Um, I've always, I've got a full time business myself, like yourself, and um, the hours sometimes. I mean, last night I was working till about half nine, ten o'clock at night. But I, I had my council role on top of that, but I never minded because I thought, well, you know, we're, we're doing some good work here. I'm representing the Green Party. I, I not swear when I'm in public and all this. Be the best I can be, you know. Try and persuade people, try and represent the party, and then you see this uh, this sort of truth staring us in the face, and I thought, oh no, I can't believe this. This is what I've been so representing, what, and how freak one. What was your tipping point? What what sort of made you speak up the way you did? Um, there was a there was a number of them. I mean, on the Friday night. I joined the conference and I, and I witnessed some stuff I was really unhappy about. I was just seeing people delaying arguments and, and talking nonsense and, and it seemed quite deliberate to stop the real discussions happen. All day Saturday, um, I was at a conference and again, it was it was like all hot air. Um, aside from everything else, there's a, I mean, the Green Party, I don't know how many people, how you sit uh, politically or or if you've met many people from the Green Party, generally they're a really nice bunch of people, are really accepting and tolerant. And I was hearing people saying that there was loads of transphobes and all sorts in our party, and I thought, where the hell are all these people that they're talking about? Because I haven't seen it. And and then it, so, it was quickly dawning on us that these people fling that accusation about, and it, it means nothing anymore. If there is if there is a transform there, a genuine one, it's, it's a bit like when you've cried wolf so many times, it's just going to mean nothing. Because that, that, the definition of it is so yeah, broad. Yeah, it has become like that. It has become like that, pretty much so. It's watered down. Um, most people don't even like... I've had people accuse me of transphobia and then not even been able to tell me what transphobia is or what the transphobia is that I've done. So it has become this all-encompassing accusation that's thrown at people but and even a minor disagreement or even if you just don't like them it's an empty, well, that, that's, empty that was kind of how I felt when, when i've had when i've been called it i've thought well because i don't look like you doesn't mean i don't like all the trans people but it's kind of if you disagree with someone's we thought they immediate immediately label you you might not have even said something that they'll say things like i can tell the way you think <laughs> Whoa! Can you can you can you see inside here? Because that's uh, that's really worrying. Um, 
And it seems as if you don't go along with 100% of their dogma. If you question 1% of it, you're a transphobe. This is dangerous. Yeah, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of room for discussion. That was the tipping point for me. I mean, that was the that was the thing where I thought, well, you know, I don't know. If, my my philosophy in politics has always been, I think I'm right, but I don't know I'm right. So I'm here to put my case forward, and if someone's got a bloom and good comeback to us, it'll make me think, and I'll I'll try and see from their point of view. We're not even allowed to do that. How long ago would you say that you started noticing a shift in attitude around you? Um, probably just before Christmas or, or around about that time. I, I thought, you know, there's people who um, maybe hold an opinion different to me. I seen that and I thought, well, I had a couple of little debates and a couple of little disagreements with people. In fact, it was after Christmas. It wasn't long before um conference. And and you get you get blocked on Twitter if you disagree with them and you try and have it. I didn't see anything rude. I didn't swear. I didn't put anything in capital letters or whatever people do. You know what I mean? I was just saying, well, how how do you not think that? And 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 it was like blocked. So then I'd have these bizarre threads of arguments where you'd only see like one side. And I thought, what the hell is going on there? And I re and, and I understood it. It's because I was blocked from people were putting the, the counter argument, you know. I thought, wow, that's a bit stuff. Um, yeah, it's it's quite common for that to happen, actually. I mean, are you aware of that? Yeah, yeah, I am now. I mean, I, I sort of just this in my head, you know. I thought because mm. I thought, how oh, come I'm only seeing like yeah. on the screen? But um, yeah, I soon realised people had blockers. I thought I'm not bothered because I did, I didn't, I couldn't really have a conversation with them anyway, and that's life, you know what I mean. If they want to spit the dummy out, that yeah. spit the dummy out. I I became aware that the Green Party were having different interests to what I thought they would have a few years ago. Like, so I always thought the Green Party were about sort of like climate change and saving the planet and things like that. And then when I saw the the Green Party, I can't remember when it was, but they said that they were happy for women to be called non men. That's what. Was, that that caught my attention. I don't really know much about the Green Party, but I know that when that came out, I was quite shocked and I was quite disappointed because I, I thought that, um, you know, what women should be called wouldn't be a priority. But obviously I'm not on the inside or I don't, you know, I don't have a lot of friends that are in the Green Party or anything. So I just wondered if you noticed anything like that or what you thought of that when that happened. I think if I had a lot of store that, I would have left a lot earlier to be honest um yeah i think when, when you when you i mean i'm in the northeast miles away from the hq first ever conference yeah. i'd been to i'd never really felt i'm not i don't know if i fit in that well with my political friends a lot of them are lovely do you know what i mean but i'm a work class kid I, I, I like to be with my mates on a weekend and stuff and I work hard you know the thought of sitting talking about all these issues when when you kind of do it so I've kept this, I've kept, I kind of know what the Green, again, but like you, I thought I knew what the Green Party stood for, about the environment, fairness, you know, social justice. But I thought, I, I thought I was old enough and clever enough to know what all that meant anyway. I didn't think it was all yeah. this shit, to be honest. I just would have. Do you feel like, do you feel like there's been a change in priorities in the Green Party or do you feel like, there's not a change in priorities, but there's a change in um, people and the attitudes they're bringing to the party. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it appears to me that, um, you know, I could be wrong here, but I've got a feeling that, 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 that well, the Green Party stands for equality, which I do as well. And I think, you know, and I think they've, they've embraced the trans community at first. And, uh, which you should, you know what I mean? And then yeah, of course. There's, there's, there's people with these extreme opinions of, of who are more ambitious have pushed their way to the, to the positions of power in the Green Party. And then it's become, well, if you don't think like me, you shouldn't even be in the Green Party. Well, hold on. Um, you, you have, some of your views are quite extreme. I mean, the things we want to debate on, you know, the, the thought of trans people getting discriminated against or, or, or not getting jobs or, or, or abused, that horrifies me and it, it horrifies most um, people who disagree with the extreme opinions. 
But what you've what you've got a lot of um, what sorry what we were trying to debate, for instance, at the, at the conference was about um, trans trans women in sport, particular combat sport, trans women going into self identifying, or men self identifying going into women's and the and the damage and effect that has uh, puberty blockers to kids without GP intervention and stuff like that. From a company, by the way, that was found to, to have broken the law three years ago on this very issue, and it was just it, they refused to debate it. Now my feeling is the vida the vida. Well, I mean, I seen something yesterday. The Good Law Project, which Caroline Lucas is involved in, being donated to by Gender GP, and you go, oh, for God's sake! So it's no yes. different. Uh, the oil industry making donations to the Conservative Party or whatever to deny climate change. Do you know what I mean? I find that interesting. That so they they're getting spons sponsorship or some sort of money from Ginger GP. So mm. that's a cause. That is interesting. That, you know that people in the Green Party are involved in Caroline Lucas with some other MPs that she feel obligated to them now because they're. You know, just the Good Law Project seems a, a fantastic project, but are you compromised if you take money from these groups? Um, what is and, the Good Law Project? Sorry, it's a, I didn't mean to interrupt I, with that. I, I, it's all right. <laughs> it, as far as I know, what I have read about it, the challenge in the government about the things like all the contracts they gave during COVID, the, the, the kind of, okay. when the, allegedly the government bypassed some of the normal Sort of tendering rules and stuff, and thought, right, we need to do this quickly. Let's give it one of our mates to do who runs a bloody close peg shop. Let's put him in charge of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, the, the, there is a feeling that a lot of the, rightly or wrongly, that a lot of the contracts were partly because of the, the situation we're in, were given to uh, companies, again, through who were friends of maybe the Conservative Party. So, they're involved in this to try and challenge it and find out if there was corruption. Where did this twenty-three billion pound or whatever go to for the the test and trace system that was a shower of shit? You know what I mean? And things like that. So there's this, which again it seems really righteous. But why are they taking money from companies like that? Why is there no debate about this company? It could be a fantastic company doing really good, but we don't know because we're not allowed to debate it in the Green Party. So it's all of these things that so yeah i would have thought like in i mean i don't know like i said i don't know anything about the green party really but i would have thought that there would be um some sort of a discussion to make sure that at least some of the members of green party are okay with where the money comes from and where the funding is but yeah, i, I mean... assume that's not what's happened I don't know if that happens it's with certainly... any political party, really. I don't know if they just if that is not up to the people. I mean, again, this is my this is just what I've seen. I may have things wrong here, but I'm pretty sure I don't because a lot of people have said they felt exactly the same when they went to conference. Thought it was disgraceful the way that issues were bypassed. It feels like the party's looking the other way. The things that are. You are know, there a lot of people? Are there a lot of people feeling like you? Uh, do you have a lot of peers that are feeling like you, but not saying something or have said something? Or what is the, what is the general consensus around you? Well, I mean, I put a, I put me, I put me resignation letter on my Facebook page because I thought, to be honest, it was a bit of an apology um, to the people who elected us. And but I also knew yeah. when I was putting it out, I thought, I hope it shakes the green body up a bit, especially the good people who I know around the country, you know, there's 50,000 members. I bet 40,000 40, of them haven't got a clue that all this is going on because they're just out there trying to say climate change and all the rest of it, you know. They're doing what I was doing and, and it's going on without their knowledge. So, But I had 500 people, 500 and odd people up to now contact us and send us messages of support, which I was really touched by. I had three three negative ones, all from Green Party members. And I thought, if ever you feel like you need vindicated for a decision, there it is. Do you know what I mean? 
Yeah, you did seem to get a lot of positive feedback on that thread as well. There was a lot of people sort of saying thanks to you for speaking up and having some integrity about the situation because I think what happened is a lot of people know what's going on but they all think everybody else agrees with it so they're scared to stand up and be the one that stands out. Aye, aye. Well, it, it wasn't that hard for me. I just thought I kind of, I kind of motivate myself to put the hours in for a start off when I don't feel like I'm going out for the right reasons. Um, so it was a fairly easy decision. I just, it's a bit like, I feel like I've been fooled a bit. I feel like it's been um, false, you know, and seeing this yeah. with my own eyes and, and I, you know, I, it's it's weird because I've got friends um, who I do a Zoom with on a Saturday night. And when I tell them about it, the, the do you know, if we didn't know you, we'd think you're a bit of a crackpot. You would think you're like one of these anti-vaxxers who's like, oh, I'm telling you, I've seen this on the internet, you know what I mean? It's true, It's uh, they're all coming for us. And I said, I know, I, I can't believe it myself at times, what I've seen, you know. And um, the, the, fact, the fact that the Green Party's always been seen as kind of a righteous cause and you know, they do claim the high moral ground of the issues, and I thought you've got no right to be there. The way you're behaving, the way the women, especially women in the party, are getting bullied and denied their rights. Um, and it's, it, you know, again, I don't want to be sexist or whatever, but a lot of the women who are transitioning into men don't seem to be the vocal nasty ones. That's just my what I've witnessed. It tends to be men transitioning to women. Or who aren't even transitioning to women, they just they could be called he or he, and the the demand to be known as that, which is which I haven't got a problem calling people whatever they want. But, yeah. Um, live and let live, you know what I mean. But but it's it tends. I think most of the nastiness comes from the males transitioning to the females. That is interesting. Do you think there's like? an element of, um, cause I've heard this actually, but I don't know how true it is that there's an element of overcompensating, overcompensating. So when you transition to be a man, you sort of, um, step into the stereotypes of what you think a man is and you overcompensate with stereotypical masculinity. That's the way to put it, I suppose. And I think that I, I find that believable that there are some people out there that will try and fit the role and so will overcompensate in that way. It's just baffling to me. I mean, um, I, I, I would have thought it would be the other way around. If you're trying to be a woman, you'd try to be a sister. Do you know what I mean? Not attack them. It's, it seems like a lot of anti-female feeling they've got. Um, yeah, that's something I've really noticed is um, because I said that early days that if if you're a, a man and you become a woman for in all the possible ways that you could do that, I mean, uh, my view is that you can't change your sex, so you're not becoming a woman. But let's just say for the sake of this conversation, you're a man and you become a woman, I would have thought that you'd be championing women's rights, not trampling all over them, not talking over women. You would um, come in with a bit of humility and you would want to be welcomed in rather than bullying your way in or shouting your way in. Or Do you know what I mean? So to me, that, that's I've, always been I've something thrown, that's got my back up. I've thrown the women out of the club to let you go in. You know what I mean? That's because that's, yeah, that's been like something that's always got my back party. up. Yeah. That's a bit like what's happening in the Green Party. You now Emma Bateman's been suspended. I put that in my letter as well that I can see that happening. And sure enough, she's the co-chair of the women's group. She's been suspended. Because she thinks along your lines, you know, that the sex and gender are two separate things. But we're not allowed to discuss yeah. that either. Transphobic, you know. No, um, I saw... Um... I saw a status you shared today, actually, from another woman. I won't say her name on here in case she doesn't want to be talked about. But one of the things she said is that in the Green Party, you're not even allowed to say what is a female. So there seems to be all of this taboo around womanhood for the sake of a few people that want to identify as a woman. And it doesn't seem fair at all. It's really, I personally don't think it is fair. I think it's bollocks, but... You know, I also think there's a lot of discussion to be had about how we can protect women's rights because we're not asking for new rights. We're asking to maintain what we've already fought for and got. 
So there needs to be um, less of an attitude that it's one or the other, because mm -hmm. there is an attitude that there is um, a, a sort of general attitude that it's either women's rights or trans rights that needs to go. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that's where we're seeing the extremism come into it, into the trans rights activism. There is, it does seem to be more and more coming into people's lives now, more people are starting to notice it because people, there are women in particular that have been shouting about this for years and a lot of people don't didn't believe them and I think now we're starting to see it with people like yourself. I didn't mean to go on a little rant there, but I'm just saying like it's right. interesting to me that you've, you're stepping up and you know I'm sure that because because of you saying something, there will be others. Like you said at the start of the conversation before I went, uh, on air with this, that there's been another event with the Green Party with people storming out and stuff like that. What's happened there? Yeah, there's. A, I think it's the Bridgewater and North Somerset. Um, okay. Group uh, of Greens have went on strike. Um, it could be. I'll, I don't know if it's going to be the first of many, but it's people are getting aware of what's going on. And they're saying similar to me. I think they just kind of go out and put the heart and soul into this. This is the behaviour they're kind of condoning if they do, or turning away from. So it's um yeah, I mean what just what you said there before though, what strikes me is when there is that divide, that's the best time for debate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the best time for people to sit down calmly and go, you know what it is, you know why I disagree with you. Well, you know why I, this is my opinion and this is why, and then you know, try and find common ground like any like anything. That's what politics is meant to be. And to, to what what strikes me is if you have if you have a group of people like that who won't describe it in, in their own party, which is a tiny microcosm of the rest of the country, how are you going to debate with the rest of the country? How That's are you going to, I mean, especially opposition? Sorry. Well, but what we're seeing with what's happened with you is a tiny example of what's happening all over the UK. And it's not just in a Green Party, this has happened in a Labour Party, this isn't just happening in political parties, this is happening in schools, it's happening in social groups, it's happening in it's happening on the internet, it's happening everywhere. I've I've is had it, um, I've had teachers get in touch with us saying, Look, I'd appreciate it if you kept but I'm saying this in the school. I'm a this guy got in touch with us, I'm a gay man, I'm, I'm, I'm you know. Um, I work in a school and I'm seeing it in front of my very eyes and it's terrifying. If kids are being told that, you know, all these new rules, basically, about how to behave and, you know, it's terrifying because this kid's going to be told off for, for being nice to people um, or not nice enough or, or not yeah. having this friend or that friend. And, you know, tolerance, I, I'm all for being... Um, tolerant, but you, you've got people looking for hate in schools now and, and interpreting actions as hate. Well, it's different to what I grew up with. You've got to let kids be kids and teach them tolerance, yeah, but you're going to label someone who's 10, 12, 14 year old as, as, a, as a person who hates because of the way they think as well. It doesn't have to be what the actions, it doesn't have to be a crime or anything now. You've got police who are going to people's houses and saying, You've, you've offended someone, you know, we're here to investigate it. Well, what have I done? What law have I broken? Well, you haven't broken a law, but you've offended someone, you've said something, or, or they think you behave behaving a way. And it, this is like 1984 shit, you know what I mean? It's like... It is. It's dystopian. And, and a, a lot of people, I mean, I'm lucky enough to be in politics, or unlucky, or whatever you know 99 percent of the population aren't remotely interested they'll, they'll watch it question time on a thursday night if if that doesn't bore them too much but if if they, if, they, if, they, if they, the next thing they'll just see that kid coming in from school and saying i've been in the head teacher's office today well what for I'm not really sure you said that most of the population don't care about politics because I actually have a different perspective. I think that everything has become politicised to a fault and it's at our own expense and it's at the expense of each other. But I don't think it's like real politics. And what I mean by that is that 
you're someone like you you've joined the green party you've done a lot of work and a lot of activism for the causes that you believe in in real life whereas the kind of politicization we're seeing amongst everybody now especially younger people is online politicization of everything and it's in my opinion it's all virtue signaling it's all shouting at each other getting um getting people done for hate speech and things like that to show how good you are um that's not politics that's not what i think politics is i don't think that's what it was ever really meant to be about i don't i could be wrong some people might say that is politics but i don't think it is i think we're political but not at the same time yeah, I mean, who would want to get involved with politics like that? I mean, thankfully, there is still people who want to get involved for what they believe in. But who would for that? Who wants to look for negative negativity all the time? I mean, it doesn't change. It doesn't make anything better. All this um, ruining people's careers for what you thought they said or, or doing this or, you know, it doesn't matter how much good you've done if you've done one bad thing. That's it. You're a bad person. That's you. That's your life defined. You should never be able to work again or feed your kids again or anything. You know what I mean? And I think it's dangerous. It's that level of that level of anger or spite. It seems spiteful to me. Um, yeah, it's definitely you know, indicative of something gone wrong. Something gone wrong in our society. To um, and I do think I've been listening to a lot of things online and I've been doing my own homework on stuff. And so apparently a lot of this ideological um, capture, I would say, with identity politics and cancel culture comes out of academia in the 90s. So I think it's interesting that we're seeing it now with the people that have, if they've gone to university in the 90s, they're now teaching the kids in university. Does that make sense? So there's a lot of people like me who haven't gone to university and I've had to do all my homework about this online because it just came out of nowhere and hit me in the face and I'm sure that's how you feel as well. It's, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm, where I'm from, I'm, I'm kind of the lefty in the room when I go for a pint with my friends, you know what I mean? Here he is, the tree hugger. And I love it, I love it, to be honest, <laughs> and, uh, you know. Um... One of my friends, one of my best friends, calls his councillor cock. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Loudly as well, so everyone can hear. Here he is, the king of your feet on the ground. So, um, but 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 the thing is, when we talk to each other, we're, we're adults and we're, we're back and forward things. I hope they listen to me, and I'll I'll certainly listen to them. And I think. Um, a lot of a lot of people have said to me, you know, oh, the loony left this, the loony left that. I've said it's not like that because I've been used to going to meetings in Sunderland or whatever or Newcastle if it's a northeast meeting, meeting all these lovely people who are dead gentle and dead well intentioned. Um, and I'm going, it's not like that, you know. Why some of them wear cardigans and all that, or you know what I mean? But it ain't what you think, you know. It's it's people doing it for now off their own back who, who want to make a better life for the kids or the grandkids. And 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 I thought, you know, I thought, all this loony left, it's a load of tripe. And then I, I seen this and I thought, now I know what they're all talking about. This nastiness, this um, going after people, the bullying, the lack of debate, the, the right self-righteousness. So Jesus Christ, how, how have I never noticed this before? Where's my head been? It's very destructive. It's, uh, it's, I see a lot of people going for the route of destruction rather than building something positive for the future. They'd rather, they want to, a total destruction and breakdown of what we've got now. And I, I don't agree with it. I think the best way to make the future better is to build on what you've got and make that better. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, um, I think there's got to be compromise. I mean, part of part of the I see a, I see a little bit of a mirror in this as well because I have seen the left. I've seen people in the left say, for instance, this statement like, "Well, people who voted for Brexit are just racists." And I've thought, "Hold on, hold on." You know what I mean? There's some, you know, you're talking about over half the population there, and I'm I'm a positive person, but I think people have got a, a variety of reasons why they voted for Brexit. 
some of them will be sitting laughing now about the, the carry on with the EU and the vaccines. Do you know what I mean? Some of them might have seen that coming that we didn't. And, and don't get us wrong, I voted to remain. But I thought you kind of label people and, and you'll get, you get it the other way as well. You know, if you're a Remainer, you're a bloody Ramona and all this. So, but I just thought, you know, if you, if you, if you surround yourself by these people all the time, they, they just agree with you. And I think that I think some of these groups do where all everything they say they get patted on the back, pulled the right, and you know yeah. they are, they're opposition are bastards, aren't they? You know what I mean? The horrible. Let's crush them. Let's join together and march. You know, expand your bubble a bit. I mean, social media's probably got a bit. All the people who disagree with it does you good. You know what I mean? Say a different. Yeah, it does do you good. I used to be a bit more like that. Like I voted Remain, but I'm not entirely sure why I did it. I thought I knew at the time, and now I'm questioning what did I really know back then because I've changed quite a bit in some ways. I've, I've not changed, and I have a bit. I've changed my perspective on other people, and I'm more willing to talk to people that I think I wouldn't agree with and find the common yeah, yeah. ground with them because I think that's really important, and I was missing out on that. I was missing out on talking to people that have a completely different perspective, and they have something to offer me, and I have something to offer them in terms of the conversation. I think it's valuable. I think a lot of young people are losing that. And I say young people, there's older people that are part of um all of this as well you know like people my age people your age um but it is i think there's a <laughs> well well i'm trying to say that we're You're relatively younger. young <laughs> we're we're relatively young i would say <laughs> <Take a little. laughs> but i am saying i do think there's um <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but I do think there's like um, I think there's a generational aspect. I do. I think there's people that are slightly younger than us that are going absolutely batshit because I personally think it's because they've never experienced any sort of adulthood outside of the internet, and that's coming from me. I mean, I had the I had the internet since I was like sixteen. But I, I didn't have the internet when I went outside. I only had the internet on the computer at home. So I didn't have uh, it in my yeah. pocket until my 20s. But kids nowadays, they've got it on all the time. So they're not experiencing real life. They're living in the internet and walking it's, around. It's first world problems. In, in world real life, it? doing what they have to do, you know. I'm saying yeah. I think it's a first world problems as well. Yeah, I mean, somebody uh, referred to it as luxury yeah, I mean a lot of my friends. You so know, somebody referred to it recently as luxury issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, and, and I don't want to downplay anyone who's being discriminated against or having a hard time at school or struggling to make friends or whatever, you know. But I mean, it's it's kind of the proportionality's been took away. I think, like if if someone's misgendered or it's a big crime or if you if you refuse to. Think a certain way, you should be. You should be like we've had our leader say this. You should be thrown out of our. I keep saying our. Oh, forget I've left. Mm. But the Green Party leader saying, you know, people who think like that are bigots and they're not welcome in our party. It's like, well, oh, that's a big statement. You can't call someone um, a bigot without any evidence. You need to. Mm -hmm. I think there needs to be a higher bar for that you know for bigotry then Definitely you need no, evidence no. for it as well you can't just be kicking people out of the political parties for that it's really important but there's that, another there's, um, there's another thing of where where i come from there's people the problems people have got about feeding their families or staying in work or you know paying the mortgage these are these are kind of real battles if you like and and what which people are facing all around us i'm still talking about people's pronouns as being a you know just baffles me, I think. Uh, but that's the biggest. That seems to be one of the biggest crimes at the moment. If you if you misrefer someone or yeah, and no one does it. I don't I've think anyone that would. Do it. That we're in a pandemic. We're still in a global pandemic, and a lot of people have lost their jobs and they're suffering, and you know they're financially in a very insecure place, and they have a family to look after, and all these worries, and all I see everywhere in the news and 
you know, even on Twitter, the police are talking about pronouns and misgendering. And what I worry about is that this will generate resentment for the trans community or for people who um, have gender dysphoria and um, may want to, you know, dress differently, look differently, present themselves differently, whatever they want to do as adults. <laughs> I'm kind of against children doing it, but adult, adults that want to present themselves differently have the right to and I think we're overemphasizing on people's certain people's feelings and prioritizing them at a time when we're in a, a real crisis a real like real crisis of people losing their homes and their jobs and not being able to feed their families that's real stuff it's real stuff that we Definitely. should be caring about I mean in the in central to what I always cared about on top of that was the climate the climate and the emergency which you know a lot of people like me think to come in and nine we've got nine years to, to, to do as much as we can to negate them the bad effects of it you know and we're yeah. taking my off the ball with all this carry on um yeah there's a place for social justice and and equality we've got we've got to do that but it's equality for all you know if if your equality impinges on someone else you know, we've got to talk about that and we've got to, we've got to find solutions to it. And when you're, when you're not allowed to, that's just, it's, I, I keep, I'm going around in circles a bit, yeah. Mm. But that was really... Yeah, that's fine. What, you know. So what's your what's your plan right. next? What's your what's your next step? What are you planning to do? Have, a no, have an ordinary life, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. no. No more uh, I mean, I, trying I, to save the planet or anything. Well, I'm not going to start putting me... I don't mean that in a horrible way. I don't mean that in a good way. <laughs> no, no. I know what you mean. Um, I think I've, 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 already, I've always got that... Uh, I've always got that um, environmental concern, you, you know what I mean? I might look at other ways to, yeah. to do something about that, but... I might look at Greenpeace or people like that and say, well, if it's full of, them, <laughs> it's full of the same... Cracker Jacks, I'll just be easier to walk away, like, uh, hopefully, and, and do stuff. I mean, you're, you've, I'm, I'm aware where you're in touch with Graham Linehan, um, stuff I might look at supporting him in one way or the other. You no, know, he's paid a yeah, big price. A, uh, he has. He's, he's, he's um, paid an enormous so, price. And what he's doing for women at the moment is absolutely it's so incredibly valuable what what he's essentially doing is putting down on video in real time the history Evidence. of what's happening to women right now yeah yeah really really good what he's doing i mean i'm not doing anything near that with these videos i'm just chatting to people but he's really documenting what women are being put through and that is going to be incredibly valuable in the future yeah. So he's a good person I'll, I'll to talk to. You should shoot him a message. Send him a get in, get on his Substack. Send him a message. That's what I say. I'll uh, probably put a link to that on this video. I afterwards. seems like a good bro. Seems like a good fella. He is, and it, he's really, I mean, really all, good. I think he gets a lot of abuse and stuff, but all he's doing is holding the mirror up because the stuff he retweets is what he's some weird old people put on out there, and he's just showing everyone what what's happening. On news articles that are factually, actually, factually true. Yeah, and it's really difficult to do because not everyone believes it. Like people treat you like you're a conspiracy theorist or you're lying. So it's a it's a difficult thing for day after day to be putting that out there, and then people say, "Oh, you're obsessed" and things like that. And he's had that. I've had that. Lots of people I know that are talking about this have had all the same accusations. It, you know, it's it's very uh, textbook. It's a difficult place to. It's a difficult place to be in as well, though, because I thought about this, like, in my own head, about when I joined the Green Party, I had a kind of positive thing to go on. I had this positive ride yeah. I was on. You know, when I'm out there sharing a pretty positive message, look, we can do this, we can do that. It's, it's kind of negative when you're fighting all the time, and it's much harder to do. And your friends will get sick of hearing about it. You'll, you know what I mean? You get people... Up Giving your abuse on the internet or whatever um, from the other side, who are who you're trying to um, make accountable or scrutinise. So 
but it's a really tougher fight than that. And I thought, Jesus, I didn't know if I could um, mentally do all that, waking up every, you know, I bet you've woke up, I bet you've went about went to bed for a week thinking about something and woke up every morning that week thinking about it. The, the, the miscap, the, 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 the the, the lack of justice or something that something really gets to you and you can't you literally can't stop thinking about it sometimes you think you know this yeah. is wrong and it can take a, a, it's got to take a little toll and i've seen i've read uh, great stuff and plus how we had these people putting his wife's business thing on and he's getting these death threats and all this and they'll do this and do that it takes a lot of courage for that man i tell you and uh and I know it's ruined them financially, like, and so I'm, I need to talk to him about that because if I'm going to send him money, his poor might be my rich, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> he might be, he might think I'm poor, but he might be still richer than me. So I don't know, but I'd love to support him in some way. And um, if it's financially, just, yeah. I can't speak for Graham, but I do think he appreciates people just listening and just paying attention and hearing what's being said and um, speaking up as well. I mean, everybody does does find it valuable when another person steps up because it's it's a difficult situation because a lot of people, like I said earlier, I think we're in a situation where a lot of people think everybody else agrees with what's going on. So they're scared to stand up. And then when somebody does stand up, they get turned into a villain so it's, it makes it difficult for others. So every time somebody does step up, it is more helpful to people like me or people like um, Graham has been doing this for so much longer than me. Um, and a lot of women out there, like there's Posey Parker and Megan Murphy. There's plenty of women speaking up. There's fucking loads of them. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's just getting more and more. It's... I'm noticing it. More and more people are stepping up now. It's a good thing. Definitely. I mean, you cannot, you cannot see a lie and, and tw turn it into the truth. You cannot, if you know bad things are happening, like the thing with the with the prisons and 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 the um, the sports, is it? You know, that's that's tough as well. Children being corralled into this position of yeah, the only solution for you is to take these drugs that we don't really know what the long term effects are. Um, we don't really know how successful they are in making you from unhappy to happy. Um, and you've got this industry, you know, you've got this medicalization of kids, which, you know, these medical companies will be over the moon with, whoever's making these drugs. So there'll be lobby groups going along with that. And it, if you just feel it's completely wrong, you, you can't can turn a blind eye. You, you've got something, you know, and it, and it can, you know, it's it's difficult though, isn't it? Because everyone wants to be kind to everyone and, and, and yeah. throw it away, by the way. But when people are doing wrong things, you've got this. I mean, did you, were you aware of the um, the Amy Challoner carry on for yes. a few years ago in the Green Party? I was going to ask and you that, kind of that was... and I completely forgot. So, yeah, I heard about Amy So the guy, Amy so the guy who... So this this person was a, a biological male transitioning, uh, got appointed as the LGBTQI um, head, I think, and was was involved in the party. My dad had raped somebody and was charged with rape in 2016, and I believe was kept on as Amy's election agent. And there yeah. was people whistleblowing about it. They were suspended from the party. Um. You know, people have left the party over it who tried to raise concerns. But you can just imagine how what a barrel of laughs their their local meetings must have been like with, with, with them at the head. Um, but again, it was anyone who challenges them was transphobic. Now this is the same shield they're using today. It's the same trick. It's, it's it, you know, you can't you can't stand up and say something's wrong because you're a nasty hater, and that's not true. People are. People are standing up because they're genuinely concerned that kids are at risk, that women are at risk. Um, and, and to say it doesn't happen, we heard that we heard that at the um, conference as well. Well, it simply doesn't happen. Well, it does. We had it, we had it in the Green Party ourselves three years ago. This guy's serving 22 years in jail now for raping a child. And he was walking around with a Green Party bloody badge on for over a year. 
Do you know what I mean? That's, that is very damaging to the Green Party, I would say. It doesn't look good. And it and, didn't and look good. Have I learned um, anything? Have I learned anything? Really? Well, no, I was going to say it didn't look good that Amy Challoner left the Green Party and said that he left because of transphobia. And I was wondering why he was never kicked out of the Green Party, to be honest, because I Daddy. would have thought that this Daddy. is devastating to their image. Hmm? Well, it's wrong but as they, well, though, isn't it? Not just the image, yeah. it's wrong. That, that you... Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that, you yeah. know that, I've no doubt there was all sorts of dynamics going on. It was a bad. You don't know how... That, you know, if... It, I don't want to go into that because it's a tricky, it's a bit of no, an ice ring walking on. Obviously, but I was just going to say that That, that, that young person could have, had a, could have had a hell of a life as well and there might have been pressure from the dad who was this horrible, you know what I mean? But yeah, we can't speak for what way, Amy's situation is. But no, I, there could I, be a, I was shocked that the Green Party didn't um, kick him out or dismiss him or just sort of um, why he stayed on is beyond mm -hmm. me really beyond me because it's, it's not a good look well the, the the point the point out of all of it is if you've you've had a situation like that and you're aware that things have went wrong but uh, but there's a tool that that's uh, those people have used called shouting people down and calling them transphobes that was their defense and that's how they they, they kept their positions in the green party we've seen this used and then we're seeing it used again now constantly and we're not we're not learning from our mistakes when we're calling out gp gender gp and well we're called transphobes it's the same shield it's the same defense mechanism that's being used and it's, it's i don't come on, man. i you, personally don't there. think it's i personally don't think that accusation is going to work for much longer because i think a lot more people have seen it for what it is and once you see it you can't unsee it so i don't think that's going to last forever i really don't i'm quite an optimist though so considering i'm still quite optimistic yeah yeah you've got to be man you've got a um, glass half full and all that eh? yeah but Otherwise, i mean i think that, i think <laughs> exactly exactly but i think there is i think there's i think it's going to be an awareness now i hope if any, if one thing that that resignation that has achieved is, it's going to make other people in the Green Party aware of what's going on, and they can they can get the party back to what it should be, you know. And um, if that means people at the top lose lose their jobs or some factions in the party have to find a new political home, let them let them go and destroy another party because I know the Lib Dems are getting this, I know the Labour Party's getting it. It seems to be a left thing where. Too, they, they let things fester for too long instead of confronting them because they don't like confrontation and they want to be seen to be nice to everybody and, and all this, you know what I mean? But you, you, can, you can only be nice to nice people. You can't be nice to hard people. You've got to confront Well, yeah, I would bodies. say, like, I would have agreed with you a little while ago that this is strictly a left thing. But at the same time, we're, we're under a Tory government right now, and I don't see the Conservatives doing anything about this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they Possibly, could do a lot more I mean, than they're not, yeah, so... Mm -hmm. I think um, it was interesting. Uh, did you see Zach Goldsmith's tweet? Either yesterday or the day before? No, I didn't. Oh, the, the group to reclaim the streets and the sisters uncut. Um, oh yeah, I heard about that. About yeah, the other night. and the the kind of they had a, they, they posted a list of all the females that had died in police custody. Some of them were trans uh, women who had raped people, and it's like, is that where your priorities lie now? Then? People who have raped women. Um, yeah, like, I mean, what's like, going on with this? It don't surprise me because sisters uncut. Um, they're known for. Um, sort of like blocking women on the internet, not having a discussion. It's, it's um, a very sort of, it's a little bit anti-woman, I would say, yeah, yeah. Sisters Uncut. They, they don't prioritise women, really. It's the nice mm -hmm. way of putting it. <laughs> I'm totally yeah, nice about it, the... but they don't, they don't give a shit. They don't give right. a shit about women. They're in it for themselves and whatever their cause is. 
that's what I that's what I felt as well when I've read about them and um it's kind of I uh, you wonder did these th did these I mean a bit like Stonewall did these organizations start with noble cause and was it just people <laughs> who spoiled it you know what I mean is it, is do, it just the human you know nature what? Really? Yeah, I reckon there's a bit of that, and I reckon there's I reckon Stonewall st obviously started with noble cause. Of course, it did, and it is it has become somewhat corrupted. And I do think that coincides with not having anything else to fight for after winning the gay marriage. So, I think that's uh, that's done and dusted with Stonewall. As far as I'm concerned, I would never support them again. But when it comes to sisters uncut i'm not quite sure what they're about i've seen them online i know they don't give a shit about women i know they're prioritizing trans women and you're welcome to do that but you don't have to shit on women to do it does that make sense so it's just that i can't support that i can't get down with it and i can't say whether they started with good intentions or not because i just don't see it i could yeah, be yeah. wrong i mean people will correct me if i'm wrong so well, yeah, I mean, the, the fact that um, a few, either at least one of the founder members has left, I think, because he's seen what it's turned into. Um, when people go, you know, Stonewall, it's a good organisation that used to do this. I go, well, the Daily Mail you highlighted how Stephen Lawrence's um, killers were 25 years ago, you know what I mean? They used to be what you would see as good, you know, it, things change. And, and it's, yeah, it do. seems clear. Well, I mean, we're going to see all this played out, I think, in a couple of months with Alison Bailey's case, where she's taken them to court because they basically, because she set up an alternative, I think it's called the LGB Alliance, the group. Yeah. Gay yeah, people who were just tired of the trans debate taking over. So they, they went, right, we'll set up our own um, group. Now, they've been labeled the hate group and all this. They don't seem to say a lot of hateful stuff by the way but they've been labeled this and she was pursued actively by stonewall and she's got all the proof allegedly i better say in case uh but it's all going to come out in court and, and who did they pick on the beauty of it is a pretty brilliant lawyer <laughs> i can't wait gonna... for it to come out in court because i've been a big support of lgb alliance i love what they're doing i think it's really important i mean i'm not gay or anything myself i'm not a lesbian or anything but um i do really value my gay and lesbian bisexual friends and i will stick up for them i think they need a space that prioritizes them and to be honest trans transgender or transsexual doesn't have anything to do with being lesbian gay or bi unless the individuals themselves are lesbian gay or bi so to to try and force that coalition it's not going to work especially not when you're trampling over gay and lesbian rights as well so i am a big supporter i can't wait for this to come out in court because i do think that's going to really be a big eye opener for a lot of people and the more this goes on the less people are going to be able to turn a blind eye and say oh i didn't know i didn't know it was happening so yeah the more it happens the better i mean it's unfortunate I mean that, that it has to happen this way but i was talking to someone about it today who was a nurse um and she said you know these things always eat each other up and i went well you know what's it going to take go for it if it doesn't sort of if it keeps progressing we're going to have all these kids in 10 years time or 15 years time at coke going look at what happened to me we're seeing it already in america where these young kids are getting mastectomies and um all this when they're 12 year old and stuff like that you know and it's horrific the long-term effects for these kids on them health because they're, they're, they're told that they're not fitting into it's the happening gender. already oh, i mean did you hear about the kira bell case yeah 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 i know that's that's um it's you know it's tragic for these kids who, who feel like they've been influenced the wrong way as well you know when you're a kid let yourself explore different genders that if you're a lad play with dolls or whatever doesn't mean you should be thinking about turning your whole body into a woman or you know these are effects that, that kids don't understand either i know i know when you're 12 or 14 you're thinking well, everything but you don't and you can make the to give them decisions like that at that age just terrifying and um yeah it's it but we don't want to see we don't want to see this being the turning point in 10 or 15 years time 
we don't want we don't want people like me and you and Graham, I'm sure, and many others don't want to wait for that to happen. For that to be the proof of the pudding, if you like, look what we allowed. And it and uh, well, we uh, already like the fact that we've already seen it with people like Kira Bell, that should be enough of a, an alarm for us all to put the brakes on this, in my opinion. I don't understand why anybody would say, well, that is just that is just one person. To me, one person is enough. One yeah. person is enough to say we need to stop and look at what we're doing here. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't mean to get like, quite angry. I do get angry about it because it, it is be, it, beyond belief to me that people are willingly playing ignorant to what's going on. People know what's going on. They know. I don't think that everybody's completely unaware. I know that you can be to a certain extent unaware of what's going on, but not completely. Aye, aye. It's, uh, it's just so... I mean, uh, I, I look think, how the hell did I end up here talking about this? When I joined, I only joined the Bloody Green Party six years ago. Because I was curious about trees and bloody, you know what I mean, air quality. And if, but life takes you away. If you see something, you can't ignore it, you know what I mean? Um, and I, I, we're all captive to our environment, whatever that is, you know what I mean? And if, if something comes along, you can't ignore it sometimes, you know what I mean? So when you were in, because obviously you're not in the Green Party anymore, when you were in the Green Party, were there a lot of significant things that you felt like you did to contribute to helping with things like climate change and things like that? Are there a lot of things that you're proud of that you've done? I a bit. Like, we've got... I've got... Um, I'd like, I'd like to hear one or two of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Um, well, the local football fields. That's how I got elected. Really, I, I put this video out. There was a there was a friend of mine joined the Green Party, and he was like a friend of a friend. And I said, I said, come on, we'll go out leafleting. Yeah. I'm I'm up for election in two months. You can give us a hand. And there was some football fields where we were the houses next to. Um, that I I kind of made a campaign. I've been out getting petitions, people signing petitions. Yeah. We know there's four hundred, uh, two hundred odd houses going to be built on these football fields. Where all everyone played on. So when when we walk past it, I said to the young lad, "Oh, we will go over, take a video of us. We'll take a video because there's loads of kids playing on them now. So we put this stuff video out, and it's got twenty thousand views. And we've, we've only got wow. seventy thousand people in our town, you know what I mean? And there's four districts in the town for, for voting areas. So we've got a brilliant response." And then um, I was thinking, bloody hell, we could win this because we're getting loads of positive feedback and everything. And then I was continuing to door knock. We were also, the whole party was involved as well in leafleting. There was a real push on my area. And there was also an incinerator being planned in my town where I live. And I did the same with that. As did other parties, I won't take the whole, but I was part of the campaign to stop it. Yeah. Uh, it was like, that was more of a cross party um, project. Um, and they both got stopped within about two months of us being elected. So half of us felt like, bloody hell, what am I going to do now? Because I don't know what I said I was going to do if I got on the council. But then we also got things like the climate change emergency declared by the council. But then we also asked them to act on it, what they declared, and started getting them to mention it at the full council meetings. Um, I continued to try and get, there were still 11 areas throughout my county that was still on the green belt building um, plan. So I kept trying to campaign, campaign against that unsuccessfully, but I thought I'm not, you get a little bit of success, you want more, you know what I mean? And I think with the climate and the environment, you've got to keep asking, you know what I mean? You can never be happy. Get, if you have a little win, you've got to go for the next one, you know? You've got a fair tax motion thing. There was, and, and last year I did a lot of, um, Videos on me, on me, on me Facebook, which were all a bit doom and gloom to be honest, because it was all about the COVID. But it's quite difficult to be upbeat, and, you know, when you're seeing uh, people die. But it was important to get the message out from the council and the, 
the chief exec took over our council and gave us information and, and allowed us to, to put it out there, you know. So it was really an information, really, and telling people about the latest guidelines. And, and so it has been quite, you know, it's been a decent two yeah, I think. Um, I'm, I'm quite happy with what I put in. I, I think I, I think I was worth my money. What I, yeah. You get about eight grand a year for your contributions. It's a bit like having a part-time job. I earned it, you know what I mean? I didn't pay many expenses on top for petrol and out because I thought, well, you know, I don't really need to. And people are people are going through a tough time anyway, and I don't want to take a piss. So, I was, uh, yes. but I always, like I said at the start, I always had that drive. You know what I mean? Like um, to do it because I thought this is we've we've got this twenty thirty thing. Uh, we've got to do as much as we can and mitigate against uh, climate change, you know. And aye, that's gone now. <laughs> well, not the not the twenty thirty thing, but the, the drive's gone, you know. Yeah, I, do, I think you've you've done good things by the sounds of it, and you should be proud of yourself for that. And I think the way you've gone out as well, defending women, is something to be really proud of. I would say. Thank you. I mean, defending, the, the defending women and children. I mean, women and children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, thanks. I mean, like I say, I don't, I, like, I don't feel I've particularly. I, I feel a bit of a fraud because I'm not. I'm not really sacrificing anything. I know you've lost a lot of friends over it and stuff like that, and Graham has, and his his life drastically changed. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of my friends know us, and the, and they'll go. You know, like I say, I've got friends from all around the political spectrum um, who who'll understand they'll understand why I was in the Green Party and they'll understand why I've left. But I've got no qualms about that. I had a bit of abuse online and stuff. I couldn't do anything about all that, to be honest. Um, that's when you, my philosophy on that as well is bloody Marcus Rashford, he's the king of England at the minute. You know what I mean? He's probably the best bloke on the planet. Well, only two out of three social media messages he gets are positive. You know what I mean? Even he gets it. So you've got to have a little bit, of, a little bit of crap. Um, and plus, I mean, I mean, I know, I know your what you've sacrificed as well. I know you've lost friends, but I think hey, you've been lucky. If if they were they were never friends, you know what I mean? I think um, everything that's gone on with me has been worth it. I wouldn't take it back. I'll be honest. Mm. It's been worth it. It's, do you know why? It's worth it to be able to speak my mind and have that freedom and uh, to stick to what I think and what I see and not... I don't like being compelled to say something that's not true. I don't like being told that I have to go along with things. So if I get the freedom of thinking what I want and saying what I want, then it's all worth it. I think there's a cruelty to restricting that in people and stifling people speech and thoughts i think it's cruel i think it um it it's damaging and i don't think we should do that to each other so well freedom freedom that's, of speech uh, that's what this country's meant to be you're meant to be able to defend free, if you defend freedom of speech you're defending the people who you disagree with isn't it it's like yeah of course it is it's not, it's not even our right to speech it's like everyone's and and you've got to be able to, you know as long as no harm comes of it fair enough you know when you see things People are really full of hate and saying, you know, get out then, you know, that is insightful. But if you if you're expressing an opinion, people are allowed to disagree or, or, or be offended. And I th we don't live in North Korea, do you know what I mean? We live in England where you're meant to be allowed to do this and have a conversation. And I always thought that's why people love our country and want to come here and 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 what we should be proud of most of all, you know, everyone's opinions worthy. Whether you agree with it or not, but like when you're told these things and you have to think, there was a story I read about um, um this this young trans kid who who, who went to work and I did, and then but had made a big uh, log about all the things that had happened to them that were bad at work, and one of the things was this uh, they'd been in the coffee room and this young lass had come over and said, "Hey, I think you're really brave." You know, you've got a lot that's a lovely dress or you know, words along them lines being really kind of them. The long that it's, it's kind of a an, an a, um 
an example of the transphobia that they suffered. And all I could think of was like, when I read this, I thought, that upsets you. You must be very um, fickle, not, not fickle, very delicate. But also I thought about that young lass is going to get dragged into the office by a boss. She's, gonna get, she's probably going to end up in tears. She's going to be told she's this, told that. Probably suggest she goes on a course to, to be able to think right and not be nasty. And I thought, this is people being kind. You know, and this, this is the is way a... to be twisted so everyone's your enemy. It's really infantile as well. Like, I remember being in school in, like, infant school or junior school when there'd always be one kid that's always stirring up shit, right? Like, going around winding everyone up that will always right. go and cry to the teacher and I'm say, teacher. so I did this. Yeah, nobody liked that kid. And there's a reason nobody liked that kid. And it, it feels like everybody's that kid now. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, everyone right. is that kid right. and they're all grown-ups. So, like, it's just, it's not, um, do you know what? It's not the most sociable way to be. It's not, not a good healthy. way to connect. Yeah, it's not good. It's not healthy. It's not a good way to connect with each other. It's not a good way to get along. It's not progressive in any manner. And it's not progressive at all. No, no. I mean, again, it goes back to sitting, sitting down with people having a, like, if we don't want to see the result of this as well affecting the people in the trans community who want political who just want to get on with their lives. Who want to feel, yeah. who, who don't want to see that level of um, kickback from these extremists affecting them because it's not fair on them. You know what I mean? Yeah, all, it's, it's a bit like what reminds me of if 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 a Muslim extremist goes into a like the Ariana Grande concert, you. As well as the absolute horror of that, I always think, God, them, the Muslim community is going to get loads of crap because of this, what they already do. And and it's, you know, they aren't representing them. They're not doing them no. any favours at all, you know. And it's a bit like Absolutely. this with this. That's how I feel. There are transsexual um, people that do speak out and they do, one of their concerns is that this is going to backfire on them. And, that you know, I know some transsexual people that... They don't deny reality. They know that they're the sex that they are, but they, you know, they're grown ups. They choose to present differently. That's up to them. Um, but yeah. The, yeah, one of the concerns is that the fallout from this is not just going to affect women and children, it's going to affect them as well. And so I would say the trans rights activists are not doing the transsexual community any favours whatsoever. But there's an invisible, I don't know if. Well, it's not an invisible enemy. It's a, it's a feeling that they've got that they've got to fight, and I, I kind of understand it a little bit. I think when if if you feel if you felt like you've had to fight for everything, keep fighting. I, I get that, you know what I mean. But it's been sort of destructive, and and when people's when you know that people are suffering because of it, like you see, like when we talked about the dear women and children in particular, um, you've got to say, well, let's let's review it. If, if, we've, if we've done something and anything, if you do anything in life, um, if you set off on a course, you've got to you've got to wonder how you're doing every now and then and reflect. You know what I mean? And there seems very little reflection on on the on the consequences of their actions and and how it's as long as it's not affecting them badly. Uh, I mean, you know yeah, I mean? that's what one about of everybody else. That's one of the things that. Um actually makes me not really believe that a lot of these people who claim they've had to fight for everything in their life, I don't necessarily believe that they have, because if you have had such a fight on your hands, you would be a lot more conscientious going forwards about your actions and how that affects others, because you would have been affected. So, But I can't say for sure that's true for everybody, because I can't tell everybody with that brush, you know. It's just a thought that I've had about this situation and how much people complain that they've had to fight and I just think is it that you've had to fight or is it that you've not had any fights on your hands and you're trying to find things to fight for mm -hmm. but that's just a thought we'll, not, not, we'll never know, you know. Till, we're, till we're allowed to sit till we're allowed to sit down with them and discuss it without being called all the shit houses in the world you know what I mean 
Yeah. This is this is how you get that, get through these things. You sit down with people who, you know, it's baffling sometimes, and you just think there is there's got to be a way through this. Like the, the the root of least damage, if you like, it's got to be a bit of sensibility and a bit of um, humility on on all sides, on all of us. Do you know what I mean? Um, we've all got to try and grow. And, uh, you know, there'll be things we don't understand about um, the trans community. And it might be useful yeah. for us to learn a bit more. But can it, if we're shouted at and, to and told we're, we're this and we're that and, and abused, it doesn't work. You never, ever win an argument doing that. You know what I mean? You don't You don't win a Brexit uh, voter over by calling them a racist. Or, or or this or that, you know what I mean? You don't win a Ramona over, a Ramona over by calling them a Ramona. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I mean, I noticed sounds... that in my, I noticed that in my own experience. I had like a few years ago, I had a little while of uh, shouting online about how horrible men are. Like men are bastards. They're all really just sort of like evil. Well, I didn't call. I don't think I called men evil, but I wasn't happy with the not all men argument. And I was, you know, really annoyed about seeing everything that women get put through. Um, but what I noticed is that shouting about how horrible men are all the time didn't get me the results I wanted to get. Like, it didn't work. It didn't um, didn't endear anyone to me. It didn't make people want to talk to me about it. It didn't. It, you know what? It just comes off as dismissive. And it's not helpful for a discussion. I, think, I really yeah, wanted I a discussion. Mm -hmm. I think we're in a time now as well, politically, where <laughs> I think we're in a time now where people feel they're being attacked as well by uh, general statements. Um, I'll give yeah. you an example of this. Um, when when the Black Lives Matter thing was going on last summer, when that started, I was I, I went to one of the um, demonstrations because I thought, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I'd never been out like this. I thought, I'm going to take the knee. I'm going to show our support uh, black people for equality. Okay. I've seen a bit of police brutality. I'm aware that racism goes on and I'm going to go down there. But when I when I discussed it with my friends after I'd been, I mean, it was a right carry on when I went. I, I thought it would be go half an hour, you're away. I had booked a game of golf for an hour after it. So I ended up going there. When I got there, I was late. Walked to the wrong side of the bloody argument, so I was all with all these football fans, <laughs> and I had to go and say to the policeman, there, "Excuse me, I think I'm on the I'm on the wrong side." And he went, "Oh, just walk through, son." So I'm, as you can imagine, there's a no man's land of about a hundred yards, and that's me walking from one side to the other. I'm thinking, "Oh my god!" And but when I when I talked to a lot of my friends after that. You know, it's weird how people are divided and these guys over there are, are, are there thinking they're protecting their thing and a, a, a statue and, and where they're to say we support things. And, um, and some of my friends were saying it's because, you know, me as a white bloke, this is this is one of my friends, but me as a white bloke, I've, I've brought up my kids to be non-racist. I would be mortified if they'd done anything racist. Um you know, we'll teach them all. We'll do, there's not a hint of racism in our house, but I feel like I'm being lectured to as if I haven't done enough. And 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 you know, there's there's an element of that. And and whether it's the media, yeah, whether it's the the political um, fights, you know, you have to be on one side or the other all the time. And you have to sometimes it's choose a side. And if and you, and you, and you pressure to feel like this group or that group, and and some of my mates said that I thought I don't know. I mean. Um, they don't understand what unconscious racism is or, or structural racism, um, and it goes a lot of, over the head. They, they think it's the real racists who should be getting shot. I'm not, not, uh, but I feel like I'm involved in it. So there's a lot of there's a lot of mixed um, things. But the way that the way that I, I thought, well, I, I don't say it to them. Well, it's because you are a fucking racist. You know what I mean? I say, well, maybe you're getting your messages from different places. And they're not as articulate as they could be for you, you know. Maybe you haven't been asked to understand, or maybe it's this, or maybe there's more. Like a lot of issues, they aren't yes or no. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. 
and and, and a yeah, lot of people I... aren't willing to invest in the time to learn about all the complexities of it. So they take one of them choices just for quiet life sometimes. I think there's something to be said. Does for that make the, sense? Um, yeah, there's something to be said for the political at attitudes that are being adopted. So with the Black Lives Matter um, anti-racism thing, I have noticed that it's not good enough to not be racist. You have to be actively anti-racist. And I don't think people really realise what that means. And I also think that adopting an attitude where it's not good enough for you to be a good person, you have to be actively against the thing I'm against. That is damaging. That's going to turn people against what you want them to be for. Does that make sense? It's not. It's not yeah, going yeah, to help I mean, you in the argument. That's like. That's like me saying it's not good enough look, to look at us women. Too little you have to actively look be look against so and so. Aye. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Talk, right, look at us two, two white kids talking about Black Lives Matter, though, you know what I mean? Again, we don't understand all of it, but we try to, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So there's a lot. There's, it's, it's like if you're not part of a community, it's difficult to understand the full complexity of it. I haven't experienced racial abuse, but I know friends I who have. That, and. and I would say that's the argument that's used by trans rights activists. So they say, if you're not a trans woman, you don't understand what it is to be a trans woman. But when women use that argument back on them and say, well, if you're not a woman, you don't understand what it is to be a woman, we're not treated like that's a, a proper argument. So that is sort of thing, I understand it in principle, and I do think it's a good principle. Um, when talking about people, you are, you know, if you don't understand what it's like to be part of that group, then you don't have um, all of the necessarily all of the necessary um, information, I would say. But that that sort of argument, I feel like, is only used on one side, and then it can't be used back. So I do feel wary about those arguments. Although I will say that it does, it is, you know, it makes sense on principle that you would need to have a little bit of understanding, I suppose. But people, I don't think people are willing to take the time to do that now. Aye, aye. It's, uh, aye, that's, I don't know if it's, I mean, I haven't been involved, I say I haven't been involved in politics for long. You know, I, I, I'm old, as, you, as you've so lovely pointed out. <laughs> so I, 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 when I was a young kid, uh, the Berlin Wall got pulled down when I was about 17, I think. Seen like Nelson Mandela, the campaign for that, for his release. Um, so I, I was quite aware of politics and that, and I, you know, I loved, I loved the carry on with the Berlin Wall when that was all took down and um, read up about it. And I've always looked at it, but I don't know if it's just a different political time now or if because I wasn't actively involved in anything back then, took an interest in it, you know. Same as the, like Mandela coming out of jail and becoming president of um, South Africa and everything. It was like these were real moments in history where you had these heroic acts or people, you know, to, to, to look at and go, bloody hell, this is amazing. This. But now it seems a lot of it's quite negative and, and you know, what have, what have we got, got to be proud of the last 20 years? Uh, what's What's been momentous apart from all the difficult things where you've had, you know, over climate change coming, that's going to be a right off, isn't it? We've, got, we've had Brexit, which has divided communities. We've had COVID this year, which has you know, killed people and blocked people's financial uh, health and mental health and everything. So, it, it, you know, it would be nice to, if something, I don't know what, I don't even know what I'm trying to say now. <laughs> It, it just seems like a bit like this. This this political environment's really fractious and um, tribal and everything. You know what I mean? And um, I let you put put in any time. I think I'm there's going, um, going, I'm going in there. No, I think that you've got a point there, and I think that um, people do look back on historical events i would say younger people are looking back on historical events and they want their moment as well and they want their thing and i think again it's the same as looking for yeah. 
things to say that you're oppressed about as well because you're looking for your fight you're looking for the thing that yeah, your yeah. generation overcome and uh, part of me thinks that you know we're living through a global pandemic that's unprecedented in our lifetime and we've got this new vaccine out this is the thing that we're overcoming our generation this is the thing that our lifetime that is going to be marked by but that's not good enough <laughs> or that's not bad enough i don't know what that, you know, that's not, for some reason, that's not the thing we're focusing on. But again, when, when you talk about, I mean, I remember this time last year, it really felt like the country was coming together, but I've seen a lot of it with um, volunteers and people, you know, delivering free food to, to old people and, you know, all the neighbours seem to want to help each other out and, and my estate and things like that. And it was a real feeling of warmth, but it, even that's been like, eroded a little bit I think in the last year could be the fatigue and everyone's sick of being cooped up in the house and you know um, everyone started with the best intentions and, it, and it ha it's been bloody hard for, for most people you know if not all people um, yeah it's you know that there's still that there's still that ability isn't there there's still that ability for people to come together it just doesn't seem to be that people that's in many people's best interests I don't know I think Does we're savable. Yeah, I think we're savable as a society. And I think, um, I do think you've hit on a point with the fatigue. I think people are feeling fatigued. I think they're feeling worn down. And that's to be expected. We're coming up to what it's been a year now since the first lockdown. So, yeah, I, I don't blame people for feeling a bit exhausted, um, maybe even emotionally fatigued. So maybe a lot of people have got their backs up now and that's where a lot of the division and tribalism coming in uh, twofold, like it's strengthened. Mm -hmm. Oof, I mean, uh, like obviously when I was part of the council, I was aware that the council was doing a lot of things about assessing funding for people whose businesses are up against the wall, you know. Um, or people who've become an there's going to be a lot more unemployment there's going to be a lot more um families being notified of social services for instance because if they're cooked up and it's a difficult situation and and dad's got any and mom and dads have got no money now coming into the house and they're struggling an already difficult situation could be a lot worse so we'll, there's not a there's there's a lot of problems going to be coming with this as well talk about the country suffering from long COVID, not not just individuals, you know what I mean? It could run for years, the, the economic um, impact and everything. And it's that, that in itself, like you say, could be a cause for us all to fight for. You know what I mean? To get yeah, through because, it and get the best of the yeah, and all this. And... Yeah, because we're experiencing, uh, we're going to be experiencing, or we already are experiencing a collective trauma and I couldn't think of anything worse than us all dividing up and dealing with this essentially on our own as individuals, side by side. I, I just think that a collective trauma needs a collective healing. And I know that sounds a bit hippie-ish of me, but, you know, it, I, I do think that's the way we need to go. We need to be a bit, oh, bloody hell, I'm going to say it, we need to be a bit kinder to each other. But I'd, even the whole be kind That's thing makes me thing. feel. Uh, <laughs> I don't like it. I tell you what, I don't like it. I don't like it because it is used against people like me. And but it's so ridiculous because everyone. I don't, I've not met anyone that doesn't want good for everyone. To, you know, maybe mm -hmm. I'm not. Maybe I'm not going out and finding that the more horrible people, but I've not met anyone that doesn't want good for everyone overall. Generally I, speaking, I people are good. There are, I mean, even, you know, I, I've got friends with some opinions very different to mine, but when it comes down to it, on a personal level, they're always very nice to everybody. Do you know That's what I mean? And, and, and so what? They might be, they, you know, Cares what people think politically if they're nice people. Yeah, that's that's going too far, obviously. But you know, as a society and as individually as well, why can't you not be kind of kind to of each other? God, 
Yeah, in the bloody obvious here, yeah, Robert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what we're going to say been, next? I've if we can all enjoyed. just eat and breathe. <laughs> No, I'm going to say I've enjoyed chatting to you, Dom. I think it's been really good. I think it's um, it's been eye-opening for me because, like I said, I've not really spoken to anyone that's a member of Green Party before. So for me, it's been nice. And um, I'm glad that you've had a say and you've got to tell people what's been going on and what's happened with you. And um, would you mind if I linked your status onto this video when I put it up? I don't know. I was going to okay, say a few, there's a few things I wanted, wanted to tell you. I nearly wrote a few things oh, down, you know, for like bullet go points. On, go for it. But the first thing go is, the first thing is, I've done your yeah, fuck you dance a few times this week. Hey. Doing your, your fella's uh, <laughs> dance. We've got this thing, one of the one of the good things we got on the um, come out of lockdown for us as a family. We've got the old N Nintendo Wii out. So we love we love so Mario Kart good. and we all play it we all play it really competitively. But if I'm ahead, if let's say we've got twelve races and halfway through it, I do the old uh, you know the David Prince <laughs> and I start dancing around the uh, living room and that and I, and it normally means I end up getting beat. But I started doing the uh, <laughs> your dance now and so good from ahead and it normally backfired. Um, <laughs> What was the other thing I was going to... Oh, the other, the other bullet point I was going to have, I, I thought we could have a little argument. I was going to try and find something. Oh, go on. We thought something different about and then show everyone how to have a civilised argument. It was a batshit idea I had, but I'm not... You know well, I mean? <laughs> you know what? We can always uh, come back to that and have another chat and come come at us yeah, like definitely. maybe pick yeah. maybe pick an it. issue we don't agree on or pick an issue that we're not like a hundred percent on and maybe come back for a chat about that and have a little debate. I wouldn't mind. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well but the but the, there's bound to be because we're two humans, aren't we? We're all bloody unique yeah. and we're gonna have different opinions on things. So I, I think that would be great actually. Okay, so my uh, only rule... you, like, the last thing I'm gonna say the last thing I wanna okay. say is when when I when I was one of our better um, Green Party meetings, we used to have these debates, and we had a person when when Brexit was coming up, we had one person who said, "Right, I'm going to do a speech on why you should leave. We should leave the EU." And another person did the speech about why we should stay, and then we had this big debate. And then we're meeting it, it was really good, and then we had a couple of and everything. But the person who did the speech to leave the EU. Nearly persuaded me to bloody change my vote. She was that good at speaking, you know what I mean? And I thought, oh my God. But it made us look and it made us understand what, what other different reasons and different perspectives why people would vote one way and the other, you know? So I think that's how Yeah, of course. Some. I think if we're going to have a debate, my rule is that we have to have a beer as well. And we have to, we have to be <sighs> friends at the end of it, okay? We have to we have to go oh, yeah, cheers for sure, for sure. at the but, end. <laughs> well, I'll have I'll have one, but I'm terrible with the drink. I'll we'll end up on for eight hours or something if, if I open the beer, you know. <laughs> or maybe maybe have the beer at the end of the debate then. We'll have the beer at the end right. of the debate. And then um but uh, hey, listen, anytime you two are up in your castle, look us up as well and we'll take you out and we'll show you the town. Have oh, you ever yeah, been up? Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I don't think we've been up to Newcastle. We've um, we've been quite far up north because uh, obviously Dudes is a musician, so he goes on tour. But obviously we've not been doing that with lockdowns. Um, I'll let you know. I'll let you know when we're back up that way. And I was also going to say because you've been Definitely. doing the because you've been doing the funk you dance. If you want, you are welcome to send a video in to us of you doing the funk you dance and we'll include it in the official music <laughs> video because he's going to be released, he's going to be putting out the official song. So, But what we're doing is um, I'm animating even, them, hey, so I'm, good I'm getting the videos and even I'm animating people, them. So it will look good. Even people my age can do it, eh? Yeah, um, I'm not ageist, so there's no age restrictions on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Shocker. Oh, Shocker. Be a be a <laughs> Definitely, man. Def- no, I've, en- I've really enjoyed it. I think it's good to speak sometimes, isn't it? Just communicate and laugh. Yeah, do you know what? The, the, the good thing about talking is that it helps you arrange your thoughts and it makes you feel a bit more sane. So it's good to bounce ideas off of people and to get it out and talk. And also for other people, Definitely. they'll listen to this and it will make them feel better as well because they'll know that there's... Especially if you've got friends in a green party, they'll listen to you, they, they'll hear you out. And it makes a difference to see your face and hear your voice rather than to read it online. It does make an impact. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it's it's just a different that different way of communicating and putting your side over, I guess, and it everyone deserves that. Even our political foes, for God's sake, you know, we we want to hear them. We want to we want to hear the good things and the bad things. Thank yeah, you. I'm gonna go and get me well, now. <laughs> all right. Well, it's been nice chatting to you. I've enjoyed it.